Hey everyone, it's Ivan with kitbadger.com out here for another course review and today I'm talking about the two day night vision course with Press Check Consulting. If you're unfamiliar with Press Check Consulting, owner operator Chuck Pressburg spent basically an entire career in the Army, kind of moving through some different positions to include a lot of time with Special Missions Unit. So, with that, a lot of time under night vision and he has his own consulting as well as training company. And with that, probably one of the more knowledgeable people in the industry with respect to night vision. So I had the good fortune of going down to kind of southwest, I guess, of Salt Lake City at a range called The Farm and doing some training down there. As the fates would have it, Chuck's flight coming from Suffolk over in Florida ended up getting delayed. So the class made the most use of the time. Initially, while there was still some daylight, getting good, solid, confident zeros on their guns. And then as we started to transition, getting darker and darker into the nighttime, basically confirming those zeros to include with our lasers and running a few drills while Chuck made it in from the airport. Once there, got all our targets pasted up, some B8s, well, Chuck got his gear together and started getting ready for that first night. We jumped in initially with Chuck going over and explaining mechanical offset of your zero with respect to your laser and where it's mounted. And then different ways, depending on shooting position, you can kind of help mitigate that. And then with that, just working offset. So going through at different yard lines, starting initially up close and slowly progressively working our way back, just working that offset initially so that we understood where it was with respect to our laser and where it was mounted on our gun. And then once we kind of had a pretty good understanding of that, accountability for all those rounds. So with that known offset, working to get all of those rounds in that X ring and working it at different distances. Like I said, initially working our way back and then working our way forward, hopefully remembering what set offset was and seeing kind of that variance between those different yard lines on what you needed to do and where you needed to hold. Something that Chuck really stresses is that accountability of rounds. And he has his own story, which is his to share as far as kind of the why behind that but it was definitely stressed throughout the entire course. So armed with that knowledge, pretty much applied it for the rest of the course moving forward. And then once we'd kind of worked through a lot of that stuff, got into a little bit of movement. Initially just kind of forward and back, nothing lateral, but working through moving and still maintaining that high level of accuracy while shooting under knots. Then lastly, we wrapped up with basically kind of transitioning targets with wide targets. So if you're just moving here to here, pretty easy, but when you're moving across a really wide range, then you have to ideally start using proper techniques as far as looking and then having your gun come so you're not gonna overshoot it and yeah, working through basically shooting those targets spread out at pretty wide distances. And then relatively early, like I think 3 a.m. or something like that, Chuck called it. Initially, we were gonna probably shoot through till like 6 a.m., but comma, it was a little colder than everyone expected. If you saw my loadout video, I explained how pretty much brought the wrong choice in clothes, same with Chuck. He and I both kind of left about a week early, him going to Florida initially, me going down to do some other stuff. And with that, the weather most certainly changed. So. That first night, eventually you get to the point where people are more concerned about being cold than they are about absorbing information. So Chuck called it, even though we actually did a lot of shooting that night. So we jumped in the car to leave. I think it was like 26 degrees. It was pretty cold, but that wrapped up night one, came back earlier that next day for basically the classroom portion of the class. Chuck is uniquely positioned to basically kind of talk about night vision in that his trajectory through the army, whether it was in the Rangers or then moving into like acquisitions, asymmetric warfare group, special mission unit to include like R&D side of it, like a lot of experience 
in that world of like night vision and stuff. Like by way of example, he was on, I think the design team for like the PEC 15, stuff like that. And really, really cool just getting that insight into one, like how tubes are actually made, how they work, all of those different things. So he was able to dive in to include into the weeds, going over just all the different knowledge kind of revolving around night vision and the tubes. While I was definitely familiar with some of the information, there was a lot of gems in there. To include just little stuff as far as even like some of the testing that had been done between like green FOSS and white FOSS, whereas like green, since it's in the middle of the visible spectrum, your eye technically can see the most shades of green more than any other color. And white FOSS, even though you cannot see as many shades, like across the board, everyone's like, no, no, I can definitely see better with white FOSS, even though like scientifically, no, may very well be a placebo, but it's a thing. And so that's why there's definitely more of a push towards white FOSS away from green FOSS. And also other little gems too, as far as, again, going back to like the spectrum of light and everything like that, how at the outsides of the spectrum, those colors start to disappear more. And so with that, think chem lights, certain chem lights, depending on the color, will be way more visible at distance versus other colors based on where they are on that spectrum. Pretty cool information in, yeah, kind of that classroom portion. Once we finished up in the classroom, time to get out to the range, initially starting with the Bianchi cup, or at least the plate portion of the Bianchi cup, I guess. Basically shooting at different yard lines and you have par times for each yard line. And it's an interesting drill and I can definitely see why Chuck does it. In that you'll get people that are really good shooters and they will outshoot themselves because there's a part time so it just needs to happen within that allotted time but the emphasis is on accuracy so you have people basically outrun themselves that could otherwise make the hits if they just slowed down and so it's it's this balancing largely honestly just balancing ego is a big part of it and working through getting those good hits so everyone went through at all the different yard lines shooting through for my own part, continuing my journey on my other strong side, shooting left-handed, definitely dropped more rounds than I would have liked, but worked through it all the same. Then taking advantage of those daylight hours before it got dark, got to work some moving and shooting. So with our rifles, basically moving kind of laterally to the targets, serpentining through cones, again, kind of that spatial awareness while being able to get good hits on steel all at the same time. And as it started to get darker, started to initially shoot with lasers, and then finally using some white light. For my own part, since I did not have a white light mounted on my gun, basically pulled out this guy, which is my Stiletto Pro, and essentially ended up using it, which if you're not familiar, basically if you have a hand stop, you can do it, or something else, mash it up against the hand stop, and yeah, go through it. Get what you get. And move. Gun. And after breaking for dinner, came back out under darkness with night vision and again, working basically that same drill, this time under night vision. So having to use your peripheral vision, like below your nods to basically kind of see where those cones are or cones lit with chem lights and snake through there. Again, getting good hits while you're doing it. Hey, got it. Right. 
and adding kind of layers of complexity to what we've been doing, got in some pistol transitions. So initially shooting with our carbine, going dry, transitioning, getting that pistol out, and again, a lot of accountability, getting those good hits. And since we had a baseline initially established, shooting that pistol, the Bianchi Cup, did it again, this time under night vision. So shooting that same course of fire, same different yard lines, same par times, but working under night vision this time. And then last thing of the night, probably one of the coolest things, started working some barricades. And initially, just kind of a familiarization piece, getting the opportunity to go through and work different shooting positions. So whether it's shooting from different shoulders, from the sides of the barricades, or different cutouts on these VTAC barricades. And with that, kind of figuring out how you had to go about it. So some of the slots, pretty narrow, especially depending on how people's luminators and lasers were set up. So how did you need to basically manipulate your gun in order to get hits on steel at distance from those barricades? So after we had a bunch of time to kind of work through and cycle through the different barricades, then basically laid out the game for us. That last evolution was pretty cool, basically kind of a competition, like last man standing. And it was working barricade drills at night under night vision. So how did it work? Well, VTAC barricades set up, some are this way, some are this way as far as stair steps on one side or the other. And initially, shooting off of whatever side was appropriate for that side of the barricade. So two hits from two different positions, and then two hits from two different positions in the middle through some of the cutouts, and then two hits from two different positions over off the far side. And if the far side was just straight up and down, then it was either like kneeling, sitting, prone, whatever, and then standing. Then move to the next. And so it was left side, middle cutouts, right side, next barricade, left side, middle cutouts, right side, so on and so forth. And so everyone started getting plugged in and started shooting through. And if you caught up to the person and they were where you needed to be, you tapped them, they were out. So there was a huge emphasis on getting your hits because you had to get your hits, two hits on steel at distance before you could move on. And it was a race. A lot of fun shooting through that until we finally had our winner. That right there wrapped up that two day night vision course. There's a little prize table laid out. So people that won different things, whether it was the Bianchi Cup or shooting barricades, things along those lines, get to go over and pick out a prize. That night vision course was awesome. On the one hand, Chuck's definitely in a unique position to speak to night vision because of his experience, both on the R&D side, as well as practical application, time under night vision, overseas, doing things, special missions unit. And then with that, the other thing that's pretty cool is kind of the inclusion of instructor development. So he'll be going through and then he'll stop for a minute and explain the why behind something, like why are we doing this drill? Which, depending on where you're coming from, incredibly valuable when you step up on the line to uh, to do drill. So this is gonna be a drill that's fired one person at a time. Uh, when you think about shooting efficiency and everything that you see out here from an instructor development standpoint is by design trying to get the maximum efficiency out of the range. So if we run this like it's a Saturday club match and you walk up here with an unloaded gun and I have you take time to make ready, you check your sights and, and load and do all that, like. How many times, times every student, are we waiting when we have a 180 berm and a bunch of grown ass adults out here? So if you go and find a uh, berm, make ready into that berm, if you are online with the firing line and get a sight picture downrange, it will be similar to the sight picture that I have in terms of dot brightness, and then you can holster up and get in line. And when you step on to the line, you know what the status of your gun is. You've already checked your chamber, you already checked your magazine capacity, you've already checked your dot brightness, you're ready to hit the buzzer and, and, and get the town. And it allows us to go faster. Um, every drill that I come up with uh, for use in a class, I am...
The other thing that came through is one, Chuck's just passion for imparting information and two, stressing accountability for rounds. Like accounting for every round leaves the end of your barrel. And with that, he has his own reasons and his own stories, which are his to share, but overall, awesome night vision class. Down below, there'll be links. Check out this as well as other courses that he teaches. But if you appreciate my content and want to support it, greatly appreciate it. Whether it's liking and sharing videos or going to Teespring, picking up t-shirts, maybe some great Death Adder t-shirts, or any of the other number of ways to include Patreon. Patreon, little as a dollar a month, Help me go out, create more content for you. Also get early access to videos, as well as some exclusive stuff. And if you have questions for me, happy to answer them. Over there on Patreon, we have an active Discord. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.